Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Flex Expectations. It's another day, another Christmas tree um, for me. Not the one at home this time, but here in the Holiday Inn in Brentwood. Um, we're here for the press conference for the MTK Golden Contract Light Heavyweight Quarterfinals. Um, the show takes place on Saturday night. It's on Sky Sports. We're all looking forward to that. Just interview Liam Conroy, who's one of the favourites for the tournament. Um, and there's also a really good English title fight on the bill um, with Lawrence Osweke and Dan Aziz going at it. Um, not only that, this weekend, as we do on Flex Spectation, we look forward to all the big fights. Ultimate Boxer, I should mention, is taking place tomorrow night at Planet Ice in Altrincham. Uh, it's heavyweights this time around. Um, a lot of people tip in um, ostensibly a journeyman in Camille Sokolovsky um, to come out on top as he's given a lot of high profile um, fighters either upsets or tough times on the, on the way to losing. Um, so it'll be interesting to see Jonathan Pilata, who's with the David Hay team, might be a bit of a dark horse in the tournament also. Um, but we'll look forward to watching that. Um, that's on BT Sport tomorrow night. But the biggest show this weekend takes place in the US and features... One of the best pound-for-pound pound fighters in the sport, Terence Bud Crawford, the currently the WBO World Weight Champion, but a three-weight world champion. Um, a lot of people saying he hasn't quite had that elite victory to really seal his Hall of Fame-worthy career, um, or to make his career Hall of Fame-worthy, I should say. He actually spoke to our, my colleague, Radio Rahim, out in the US yesterday, and you'll see that um, on the channel, and there's an article about it on our website where he basically says he thinks his achievements, including being the undisputed champion at 140 pounds previously, are already better than a lot of Hall of Famers. That's certainly a subject to, to dispute. He's going up against his mandatory challenger this weekend in, and I'm going to have a crack at saying this right, Egedijus Kavaliorskis, I think, um, who is a two-time Olympian, former world bronze medalist, so a really good amateur kind of not overly impressed as a pro he was doing really well up until he ran earlier this year into Ray Robinson who you'll probably remember on the first Joshua Ruiz card holding uh, Josh Kelly to a draw did the same thing with Cavaliorskis both men claiming they'd done enough to win um, Cavaliorskis came forward throughout the fight landed a lot of body shots aggressive fighter Ray Robinson's a tricky southpaw and um, had his moments as well and the problem is if Cavaliorskis is struggling a little bit with Ray Robinson then against Terence Crawford he's going up a couple of levels to one of the very best fighters in the world and certainly one of the slickest most awkward southpaws in the world someone who boxes incredibly well from range and on the inside and someone who really packs an underrated dig as well um, Crawford if he's the man we all think he is and as long as he's not lacking motivation should be able to stop Kavaliorskis um, it'll be tough in parts I think um, he's got a lot of heart a lot of guts um, the, the challenger but I just don't see him troubling Crawford to any great extent I mean Crawford the biggest problem he's got is that and it's a nice problem to have he's with one of the best promoters in the world in top rank and fighting on ESPN but the flip side to that is that most of his welterweight rivals the fights we'd really like to see the likes of Manny Pacquiao Errol Spence of course Keith Thurman they all fight under the PBC banner which is usually on Fox or Showtime so it's very hard to make those fights. And for Crawford, he suffers more than anyone else because he's the outlier. He's the one on his own, if you like, out of the best welterweight crop who are with that broadcaster, whereas the others can all fight each other. And indeed, we might see Spence against Pacquiao later this year. Um, so you have to feel for Crawford there, although he truly believes that if two fighters really want it, they can bypass the promoters and the, the wrangles to an extent and make those fights happen. We'll wait and see, but... I don't think his pound-for-pound pound claims or even his claim as the best welterweight in the world are going to be elevated somewhat, regardless of what he does to Cavaliorskis. In fact, a more intriguing fight on the same show is for the uh, IBF lightweight title between Richard Comey and Teofimo Lopez. And not only is it an excellent fight, it's kind of a final eliminator to fight one, another one of the pound-for-pound pound contenders in Vasily Lomachenko. Um, Lomachenko's talked about moving down from lightweight, but the IBF belt is the one uh, that he hasn't won yet at 135 pounds. He'll be keen to meet the winner of this fight and it's an easy one to make given they're all with top rank. Richard Comey on a run, I think, of four straight knockouts in good company. Really tough fighter, underrated, aggressive, strong, very physically strong. Teofimo Lopez, young, fresh, flashy at times, just on a real great streak until his last fight when he struggled a bit against Nakatani, tall, really tall for the weight, Japanese, um, who just wouldn't be budged no matter what Lopez did and gave him some problems as well. 
So he's talked a good game in the build-up, Lopez, as he often does, and he seems incredibly confident he's going to win and buy a stoppage. But this is a really, really tough fight to call. Um, we also see Mick Codlin, um, funnily enough, out on the show. And finally, the long-awaited rematch from the Olympics with Vladimir Nikitin, who was, of course, judged a highly contentious victor over Conlon back then. And now they're going to meet as pros. To me, although the grudge angle sells it easily, the issue is that uh, Conlon's a lot further ahead in his development. He's fought a lot better fighters so far as a pro than Nikitin. And I think that's going to show on the night. But still a really good value show and a chance again to see Terence Crawford, who's been out of the ring since April when he beat Amir Khan in a fight which had quite a disappointing finish. So we get to see him in action. Hopefully he'll be a bit busier in 2020 and this will be a bit of a springboard for that. Um, but yeah, I'd like to hear from you guys. Obviously, what do you make of Karaliorskis? Does he have any sort of chance? Who are you picking out of Komi and Lopez? Because that's a really intriguing one. And as I said, you know, the winner should probably go on and fight Lomachenko. Who are you picking for the MTK Golden Contract Light Heavyweight Tournament overall? It's only the quarterfinals on Saturday, but who do you think is going to go all the way? And who's going to win Ultimate Boxer tomorrow night? A um, lot of questions for you, but I'd appreciate it if you can answer as many of them as possible. Saves me the job, and I'll reply to some of the better comments. I'll be back next week, of course. Um, can't guarantee the Christmas tree, but you never know. 4.30pm Thursday, and here on Monday, 4.30pm for Reflections. Always a pleasure, and I'll see you next time.